Hey everybody, what's going on? Fabian for Liberty. Fabian for Liberty.com is my website. Resourceful Real Estate Academy.com is my other real estate educational website. In this video, I want to talk about the Chinese market collapse, comments made by George Soros, uh, and really what is global turmoil going on. Um, first, let's talk about the market collapse in China. You know, it was down 7% today. Uh, the, they have this new like circuit breaker system that when the market goes down, it shuts down the market, suspends trading. Um, but it was reopened and then it went down again. It was like 24 minutes of full-blown panic. And that's led now to the market being closed, was closed for the day in China. This comes, it piggybacks on the heels of George Soros making comments yesterday in Sri Lanka, uh, talking about how he is concerned about the financial market, global financial markets repeating 2008. Now, I find it interesting because George Soros, he doesn't really get too many things wrong. And he's on record, you can see the YouTube videos where he talked about China will be the leader, uh, the global engine of growth. He loves the Chinese model. Like I said, he doesn't get things wrong very rarely because he's not only an investor, ladies and gentlemen, really what he is, is he's someone who influences governments, has been behind revolutions. He's, you know, behind the Clinton machine, one of the reasons that I think Hillary Clinton will ultimately win uh, the White House if the economy is kept on track in this kind of perception, rose-colored glasses, that there's a recovery. Now, could it potentially be that the Chinese are, in essence, fabricating this market collapse? Why would they benefit from that? Well, here's what I think. I think that um, I am very suspicious of the Chinese government. I think that I wouldn't put it behind them actually imploding their own market. Remember, 60% of Chinese companies are owned by the government. And um, real, or, you know, some estimates are even higher. So if they just had several of their big institutional investors begin to dump shares, it caused the kind of panic we saw today and yesterday. Why would they do this? Well, I think they would potentially do this because it ultimately... Uh, will lead to more market collapses around the world. I mean, the Dow was down today over 300 points. It's recovered a little bit. Uh, certainly starting off, it's like it's the worst start of the new year since 1991. And, you know, you'll hear this on CNBC all day. Well, it's the worst start of the year, but 1991 was a bad start, and the market ended up going up 20% that year. I still think the market will continue to go up. Again, all fabricated, all phony baloney. I think the Chinese could potentially be collapsing their own economy so that the world can be like, well, wow, look, the current system is not working. It's something George Soros really, really wants. I mean, he's talked extensively about a post-U.S. dollar world reserve currency world. He's been pushing for something like this. And it would need to be a crisis. I mean, in order for there to be a global economic reset, in order for there to be a transition away from the U.S. dollar uh, to a new basket of currencies, if you will, or to another currency, uh, you need to have crisis. History shows us this very clear in the last six global economic resets that have taken place. We're on the verge of the seventh. Will it happen this year? I don't know. Maybe next year, probably. Um, I think, but it will happen. There's no doubt about it. And I think that if the Chinese are able to implode their own economy or implode their own financial market, uh, go through that period of pain in order to rally nations around the world that will be affected from China's collapse, um, this is the kind of precedent they would need to say, you know, we need a new system. Now, yesterday or a couple days ago, I did a video regarding my 2016 predictions. And I talked about how Hillary Clinton, if the economy were to seriously tank in the U.S., she wouldn't win. But if you believe, like I do, that the New World Order and people like George Soros and the big banks want her in, then they have a vested interest in keeping the markets propped up. I mean, it's so abundantly clear. Now, certainly, if just a Chinese market collapsed in America, uh, there, uh, you know, the U.S. economy remained like it was in 2015, well, she can continue the narrative of, you know, the market's recovering, we're doing not as good as we can be, but we're doing all right. Um, or if the market tanked in the U.S. because of a Chinese fallout, she could say, well, it's not necessarily U.S. policies. It's that, you know, the, it's now a global economy and China's tanked. This all reminds me of a book written by two famous generals who are really like rock stars in China today, uh, Unrestricted Warfare. And it's all about how to collapse the U.S. dollar and how to collapse the U.S., how to destroy the United States without conventional warfare. Financial warfare being one of the big things that they actually talked about and has been extensively talked about by the Chinese and by Russia. Remember, Russia and China colluded in the short selling of Bear Stearns in 2008 that led to the market collapse 
uh, China supposedly pulled out uh, at the last minute, but the Russians went along with it. So we're in an age of not only internet cyber warfare, but we're in an age of financial warfare uh, that is taking place. So I'd love to hear your comments on this. Now, in addition to that, it very well could be markets are being affected uh, by the global chaos that's going on. You know, Saudi Arabia pumps 10 million barrels of oil into the market a day. Uh, if something were to destabilize Saudi Arabia, regardless of how low oil prices are now, that would be crippling to the overall economy. You have Saudi Arabia and Iran at one of the highest levels of tension uh, in recent years. And, you know, they, these countries hate each other. And it's absolutely a civil war that has already started in the Middle East, but it doesn't end there. Uh, you have North Korea uh, detonating a hydrogen bomb. Now, the U.S., uh, the White House claims it wasn't a hydrogen bomb. They don't believe it. Uh, but nonetheless, it's their capability for missiles uh, and for uh, nuclear warfare is definitely improving. And, you know, you have the fear mongers and you have the, uh, uh, the neocons out there saying, well, they could fire nuclear missiles and hit Seattle or hit Los Angeles, hit San Francisco. Whether or not that's true or not, the point is, is that, you know, investors do not like, um, they don't like the unexpected news. They don't like instability, instability. And we are certainly in a world right now, at a time right now, where instability has been the highest that it's ever really been geopolitically. And that's not even talking about things like Syria, talking about ISIS, talking about the ongoing disputes in Ukraine, talking about uh, ISIS terrorism throughout Europe, talking about the southern border to the United States. All of these things got people kind of freaked out. So it's really a perfect timing, in my opinion, for the Chinese to move along with something that would further destabilize. They win in the destabilization. Remember, if there is a full-blown economic collapse, or when that does happen, I think that we will have this new order that will you know, basically uh, take place. It'll be a new financial order, something George Soros has talked about extensively. Again, I'm Fabian Calvo, Fabian for Liberty. Again, check out resourcefulrealestateacademy.com for great real estate training. Thanks, everybody, that joined me on my webinar last night. It was really good stuff. Despite the absolute uncertainty in markets, the insanity, uh, for me, I'm still betting on real estate. I get in and out of real estate deals. I believe it's still a great opportunity both uh, but before and after uh, the next uh, downfall in this market, before the end of this current business cycle. So, again, thanks, everyone, that joined me yesterday. Thanks for watching.